sign negatively correlated, so it's not like it flipped to a positive correlation. And then hitting the, the arrow, we're going to say let's make the trend line uh, solid and let's make it orange. So clearly in this example, unlike the hens and the eggs example we saw last time, we can see that there's a mathematical correlation no matter which one we, I mean, there's a low, you know, correlation. It doesn't look like it's very correlated, but if there was any mathematical correlation, then we can kind of determine that with the trend line, but we have, we don't really have any idea what the cause and effect relationship would be at, at this point, if there was any, because with the hens, it seems pretty clear that you could say, well, the hens are causing, you know, the eggs. I would think the hens would be on the X, but you can plot it either way and you're still going to get if there is a correlation, that's directional correlation uh, of a, a negative correlation sloping down, positive correlation uh, uh, sloping up. Okay, so there is that. So now what we want to do uh, is is compare that. Let's compare that to to a system just to see what people normally think of when they think of random numbers. This is way too like clumped up for most people when they actually try to generate uh, random numbers. So so let's add a, another data set what, w which would be closer to what people would actually kind of do when they, when they try to set up random numbers. So I'm going to set one, set two. So let's say set one and then uh, set two. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I'm just going to space everything out by five. So I'm going to say, this is going to be, let's do it. This is going to be equal. Well, let's just do it this way. We'll say five, 10. I'm going to bring that up to 100 and we'll stop it at 100 to do like that. And then I'm just going to copy that and repeat it multiple times. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it and paste it. Now these are in the way now. Get out of my way. And then paste it and paste it and paste it and paste it and paste it. I'm going up to like 215 is what we had before. 200 and paste it to 215 or 16 right there. Let's delete these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just have it off a little bit. So I'll start this one like at the 30. So I'll paste it. I'll paste it here. I'll copy the same thing. 5 to uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to 100. So we'll copy that, but I'll start it. Let's start it at 35. I'll paste it here. Paste. Paste paste, 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 and then I'll copy this last bit, copy, and that should fit basically up top here. Not exactly, but I'll keep, I'll do it, that's fine. I'll do that here. So there we have it. So there's our numbers. Now, obviously, most people, when they pick random numbers, they wouldn't just count by five, but they tend to space things out. So for example, if I add another column, I'm going to put my cursor on column K, right click and insert, and then I'll make this a skinnier column. And I'm just going to say, this is going to be my random numbers for one. And then I'm going to insert over here, insert. This is going to be random for two, and I'm just going to generate random numbers this time equals random. And this is going to be just random, not between. And that'll give us a long decimal format home tab number. It's going to be a long decimal formatted number. I'm going to double click that down, taking it all the way down. I'm going to copy that and put that over here. Control paste and double click copying it down. So now we've got this random number generator. Now I'm going to now I want to put a space between these two. I want to put a column between them and then I'm going to make two different tables for random one and random set two. So I'm going to select column M. I'm going to right click and insert. So now we have a spacer between these two. 
then I'm going to insert a table for both of them. Let me just scroll down and make sure I, I have everything done correctly. Notice I have too many cells on this side. I should have brought it down to 216. So, so I'm going to delete this last little bit before I insert the table, deleting that. And then I'm going to scroll up top, put my cursor here and go to the insert and let's insert a table. So we'll insert a table, data set one, and this side I'll do the same home tab, uh, I'm not, insert tab, tables, insert a table for the second data set. All right, so now I can shuffle these. So I'm going to shuffle them randomly. So now I took my number that had a pattern and I shuffle them over here and I shuffle them these ones as well. And this is similar. This is more like what people would probably kind of come up with. They wouldn't always end with a five, but if you were thinking about coming up with random numbers, people would be like, ah, five, and then like 45 is like away from that. And then like 30 is, is pretty far away from the 45 and uh, 85. You wouldn't really think to do another 45 right here or something right next to it, right? People will usually kind of space everything out is what the point is. So let's copy these two so it doesn't keep on shuffling. I'm going to put my cursor on column L, put my cursor on column uh, o as I hold control. So I have non-adjacent cells that I'm going to copy, right click and copy. Let's put that in column Q, right click and paste just one, two, three, just the value so it doesn't keep shuffling. And then I'm going to make a skinny P column. Let's make this the header by going to the home tab font group, black, white, let's center it. And then let's just select this data. I'm going to say control shift down control backspace and then insert and charts and let's make a scatter chart of this information and so now you have this information that uh oh hold on a second that a lot of people would say well that looks random because it's nice and spaced out but the point is that this is not exactly random it it's this is this is going to be what it looks like when it's random where you have all these clumpings that happen more often so this clumpiness isn't a sign of unrandomness oftentimes if you see something that's too uniformly distributed like this it's likely that there's not randomness in it now whether it be random or not however we're looking at the correlation between the two between the two data sets so we'll continue on next time and we and neither of these data sets are really exactly connected to the other. The first one, we, we selected two completely random data sets. And the second one, we had kind of a system and there's a pattern to the two data sets that we used and then we shuffled them. But again, they're not really connected together. So you would think the correlation would be similarly low. So in other words, if I hit the plus button here and add the trend line, you've got a very low uh, correlation. I'm gonna say more options, trend line, and let's make it uh, solid and orange. We could still, even though there's a low correlation, we could still make it a trendy line by making it, dressing it up properly uh, so it looks appropriately dressed for the occasion. So anyways, next time we'll go in and we'll do the, the formal calculations continuing on with the practice problem.